please note that this video is only a conspiracy theory, and in no way could be real. Please take this video lightly and not too serious. On November 21, 1963, President Kennedy accompanied his wife, Jacqueline Kennedy and Vice President Johnson and undertook a two-day five-city fundraising trip to Texas. The trip was also likely intended as an attempt to help bring together a feuding Democratic Party in a state that was vital to Kennedy's chances for re-election in 1964. Although Adlai Stevenson, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and a liberal icon, had been confronted by highly agitated protesters a month earlier during a visit to Dallas, a city with right-learning press, and the local of much anti-Kennedy feeling. The president was warmly welcomed at his first two stops, San Antonio and Houston, as well as in Fort Worth, where the presidential party spent the night of November 21st. The next morning, after making a speech in a parking lot in front of the hotel in which he had stayed and then speaking again at Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce breakfast, Kennedy and his party made a short flight to Dallas's Love Field Airport. At the airport, the president and first lady shook hands with members of a hospitable crowd before boarding the backseat of a customized open convertible to ride with Democratic Texas Governor John Connolly and his wife to the president's next stop, the Trade Mart, where Kennedy was scheduled to deliver another speech. An estimated 200,000 people lined the roughly 10-mile route to the Trade Mart. As the motorcade turned southwest on Elm Street and began traveling through Dealey Plaza on the edge of downtown Dallas, the president's convertible passed the multi-story Texas School Book Depository building. Moments later, at 12.30 p.m., shots rang out. A bullet pierced the base of the neck of the president, exited through his throat, and then likely passed through Governor Connolly's shoulder and wrist, ultimately hitting his thigh. Another bullet struck Kennedy in the back of the head. The motorcade rushed to nearby Parkland Memorial Hospital. Reaching it quickly, however, doctors' efforts were futile. Kennedy was officially declared dead at 1 p.m. Connolly survived his wounds. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested on November 22, 1963, for assassinating President John F. Kennedy Jr. That same day in Dallas, Texas, two days later, while being transported to a local jail, Oswald was shot and killed by Jack Ruby, a Texas nightclub owner. This was a shocking set of events was ripe for conspiracies from the start. Not only was a handsome, popular president fatally shot in broad daylight, the accused assassin was killed days later, inviting speculation about a cover-up. As early as the late 1960s, more than 50% of Americans didn't believe Oswald had acted alone. And as of 2017, 538 reports, 61% of Americans believed the assassination involved a conspiracy of some sort. In 1966, New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison began an investigation into the assassination of President Kennedy. Garrison's investigation led him to conclude that a group of right-wing extremists were involved with elements of the Central Intelligence Agency in a conspiracy to kill President Kennedy. Garrison also came to believe that businessman Clay Shaw, head of international trade market in New Orleans, was part of the conspiracy and on March 1, 1967, Garrison arrested and charged Shaw with conspiring to assassinate President Kennedy. Three days after the Shaw arrest, the Italian left-wing newspaper Peace Sera published an article alleging that Shaw was linked to the Central Intelligence Agency through his involvement in the Centro Mondiale commercial, a subsidiary of the trade organization Permindex in which Shaw was a board member. According to Peace Sera, the CMC had been a front organization by the Central Intelligence Agency for transferring funds to Italy for illegal political espionage activities. Peace Sera also reported that the CMC had attempted to depose French President Charles de Gaulle early in the 1960s. The newspaper printed other allegations about individuals it said were connected to Permindex, including Louis Bloomfield whom it described as an American agent who now plays the role of a businessman from Canada who established secret ties in Rome with deputies of the Christian Democrats, and neo-fascist parties. The allegations were reprinted in various newspapers associated with the communist parties in Italy, France and the Soviet Union, as well as Garrison's subsequent accusations against the Central Intelligence Agency and Oliver Stone's 1991 film JFK. On January 28, Clay Shaw was brought to trial on charges of being part of a conspiracy to assassinate Kennedy and the jury found him not guilty. Yet another theory put Johnson at the center of a plot to kill Kennedy to clear his own path to the presidency. Evidence for this theory was supposedly provided by convicted Watergate conspirator, 
and former CIA agent E. Howard Hunt Jr., who claimed that Johnson had ordered CIA agents to kill Kennedy. A bombshell revelation was a dicta belt audio recording made from a Dallas motorcycle policeman's microphone that was said to provide evidence of four shots, that is, three by Oswald and a fourth by another shooter. The fourth shot, a miss, was thought to have come from the grassy knoll. As a result of this acoustic evidence, the HSC had concluded that there had been two shooters and that the assassination was likely the product of a conspiracy. The committee also concluded that neither any U.S. security or intelligence agencies nor the government of Cuba or the Soviet Union had been involved. It did not rule out the involvement of organized crime or anti-Castro groups, but it could not prove it. Not long after the committee published its report, however, the reliability of the acoustic evidence and the conclusion drawn from it came under broad criticism, greatly undermining the HSC assertion that there had been a conspiracy.